Hello everyone, dear viewers of my channel. It's Solid with you again, and today we have an interesting package from subscribers. I never cease to be amazed by you friends, because you are the reason our channel exists. Thank you so much for this. For example, Artyom sent me this package from Siberia. It's heavy. Immediately thank Artemka in the comments, put likes, because what is here is not for sale in Moscow. There's no way to find it. I was looking specifically. Fables will be called the Power of Siberia. If you look closely at the map, you can really see the power of Siberia. Power. Let's open it up. A box full of goodness and positivity. Do you understand me? Yeah, yeah, don't be surprised. Well, that's something that needs to be sorted out now. Artyomka surprised me because I see such canning jars for the first time in my life. I've been doing reviews for years and I've never seen anything like this. There's a lot to be surprised about. So look, we've categorized all of this into a few categories. First, there are the soups. Next naturally is our favorite cereal. And a very nice slogan is written. We eat our own food and feed it to our families. CEO Goldman. Well, it's certainly not going to lie. Siberian, our man. Next is the most interesting part because this is where the meat twists are. Elk, venison, beef stew, but that's just us compared in quality to what I'm used to seeing. Roe deer, there is also buffalo meat and beaver meat. As you know, I have a soft spot for party. I can tell. There are three jars here, small ones like this. Moose party, chicken liver party, and duck meat party with tiger hogs in cream. But there is nowhere else in the world except Russia. Oh, and where are the goodies without them, guys? Traditional sweets for a tea party. The tea itself, and an unusual cedar tea too, is the first time I've seen it. It comes with cedar cone jam, along with the cones in a jar, by the way. These are the confitili. And the most amazing thing here is our homegrown cedar coffee. I'm on a diet, but I'm basically half an hour into cooking here. Cool. I've been re-watching the movie Kinzadza recently, and you know, it made me feel so warm. Some good friends of mine seemed to hear the call of my heart and got involved with Mosfilm. So gentlemen, fire up your pebblations and head out into the world of ships. As of April 3rd, content from the cult film Kinzadza is now available in the game. I'm sure a lot of people wanted one. Here it is, a chance to see both Lutikolonka and the main characters of the movie. And it's all in the new Pluck Harbor with pretty sandy landscapes. By the way, the port is exclusive. Do you want to get forever? Play two battles. There will also be chains of in-game challenges for which you will be given those very CCs. They, like in the movie, can be traded for anything. UF and B commanders, an Uncle Vova, and a violinist with a unique two-voiced voiceover. A new level nine hybrid battleship the Tranklucator in themed permanent camouflage, turning the ship into one of the landmarks of the Kinzadza galaxy. Aside from the entourage, classic airplanes will be replaced by squadrons of Pepalazzi and also containers and shop in which you can find no less themed camouflage on the aircraft carrier Nakimov. Yeah, with Pepalats too. Also, completing tasks will bring additional containers and the yellow pants flag. And if you use the invite code SUPERSTAR2024 when registering, you'll get 60 days of Prem, 10 containers, a ship, and a lot of other useful things. Hurry up, the Kalaba is not infinite, just until April 24th. Make your time, commanders. What did I want? To eat, yes. Let's start with the soups. First pea soup with smoked rib broth. Pay attention to appearances, friends. So, it includes beef broth, veal, fresh potatoes, dry peas, pounded peas, onions, onions, carrots, salt, pepper, and bay leaf. Here we go, I'm drooling. You know what I just tried? It's not even broth. It's a very rich fatty gravy. Meat meat. A dozen at once. It's such a harmony. I never fucking thought pea soup. You can make it like this. Like this. Because here peas are permeated with smoked meats. And smoked meats together with meat are permeated with such a subtle flavour of peas. But not nasty. 
but very warm, our native. And it's all topped with potatoes. Nice. Dessert. It's impossible to stop, guys. Let's move on. Mushroom soup with veal fried in butter. It looks presentable, too. Note the number of mushrooms. The composition here is beef broth, fresh potatoes, veal, mushrooms, fresh mushrooms, onions, onions, carrots, sunflower oil, and it says butter. Here I am stirring in front of my nose right now. It feels like I'm in a mushroom greenhouse. That's where all those locusts live. Let's go. Immediately, there was some sourness that was suspicious, but that's okay. It's probably mushrooms. Do you have wasabi? Yes, they usually flavor the previous dish with it to compare. What kind of a mushroom country is this? France, they're all on mushrooms. Certainly not a French dish. I'll give it to you straight. There's nothing so amazing that wah 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 wah. It's already water, not even broth, I'd say. But as a soup for a second helping. Subtitles by Dima Torzok. Seven. Up next, I've got my next two soups waiting for me right now. This is Kashlama and naturally Siberian borscht. Let's start with the Hashlama. Actually, a canonical recipe. Two. The Armenian version of Kashlama is based on lamb, while the Georgian version is based on beef. But I have lamb, peppers, sweet eggplant, onions, tomato paste, salt and black pepper. More. If it's canon, they put beer in it. Well, you realize he's not here. I'm not happy. It smells like this greasy stuff. For some reason, I associate it with milk, goat's milk. Especially since it's a little overdue. Literally not. It's all greasy, oily. It's a very powerful flavor. That's the only upside. You eat it as if it were a dressing to some other dish. That would go great with rice. She's so fat. I never realized that this little herbivore could be such a fat creature. We need to correct this injustice of no beer after all. Very fat, I give it a six. Well, finally, a more familiar dish. Now the belly needs to loosen up a little bit. If you've seen borscht like the one pictured here, that is ultra red in color, it's not borscht anymore, it's beet. And real homemade borscht looks humble, like this. It may seem a little boring at first, but that's only because it's borscht. Yes. Fucking hell! It's borscht! Here, curl your fingers. I therefore tasted borscht in kindergarten, in high school, in college, in college, in college, in college, in grad school. And it wasn't the same. It was, yes, delicious, wonderful, savory, colorful, but not homey or anything. That's the fat that floats on top of the yellow plate. There's no such thing here. See, this is what a neat little borscht should look like. Here it is. Nothing extra. Surprisingly, it tastes more like a simple, so boring soup, with salt and with meat. Hmm. Naturally a 10. That's it, there's nothing. The first course, unfortunately, has run out. Let's move on to the second. The best way to open cans in the woods is with a titanium D2, a stylish folding knife from a legendary blacksmith with 20 years of experience. That means it will never let you down and will keep sharpening for a very long time. The handle is made of G10 and the blade is made of durable D2 steel. You can easily cut anything with it. It'll hold up under any strain. Most importantly, it comes with a certificate that the knife is not a cold weapon. Therefore, for hiking, it is the best option. Plus, the blacksmith gives a lifetime warranty on his knives because he is confident in the quality of his work. So highly recommend Bark Forge and its wonderful knives. Check them out on their Telegram and WhatsApp at the link in the description. Say hi for me, and the solid promo year will get you 20% off. All right, feeders are full, and we've got porridge coming up. Let's start with a simpler one. Let's say a pearl barley. 
I remind you that it's unusual here too. 68% meat. And indeed, there is a lot of meat here. The only nuance is the difficulty of heating these canning jars because they are filled to the end and pressed properly. This has a problem. The bottom burns and the top is correspondingly cold. Well, I'm used to it. Let's go. Here, guys. Please write in the comments who caught the Soviet Union Gostovia cans. Tourists breakfast pullover. Because in my opinion, this is it. It's the same thing. Not oversalted. Huge size pullover. Huge size pullover. Even distributed meat. You eat it. You don't even have to stir anything. Mmm. Mmm. The only thing missing is the onions. Just a little bit more would have been a definite sweetness. I'm not going to stretch this mess out for long. I'm just going to eat it, and that's it. One is a knob, the other is not tortured at all, just fried. Bonus? No, I don't know, maybe I'm a pervert, but I like it a little burnt. An indispensable 10, of course. The next porridge is called, naturally, buckwheat, also with beef. And mind you, it's only 60% meat. You've been robbed. This is a discredit, I believe, to buckwheat. Agree, Sergei. Don't drag me into your cult. Until what date is it? Is that okay? Fresh. See, it's even moving. I was still running yesterday. Well, what's missing? Well, it's roasting again. You're missing the onions. Yeah, that's right. Could use a little bacon and bacon grease. That's it. That would be great. But, in my subjective opinion, a little too much salt. Here it comes. Seriously, a little dry. You need something to wash it down with. I even got a bicycle specifically for such occasions. Buckwheat should be eaten aesthetically. You can't do that. Little finger out. Let's go. Bitch, it's Columna. Little finger didn't go? This feels like 60% meat. Or 68. Well, by the 30th, they said 87 would put in percent meat. In my dream, they said. Yeah, when you run out, it's like a buckwheat collapse. You're a good nine today, transplant? About the pilaf, that's a separate conversation. Because when I opened the canning jar, this is what I saw. Poked him with a spoon, nothing happened. I was starting to worry if there was anything in there besides rice. And it turned out that everything was actually cooked according to the canon. If you trace the recipe itself, the meat is cooked first. Then it's topped with little things like carrots, chickpeas, and I'm seeing a little bit of raisins here and there, which is rare for canned dishes of this variety. And then it is covered with rice like a blanket. And in this little tin can, we saw the same thing. And if you mix it up, it's a beauty. Let's go. The taste feels like living in Siberia, in Uzbeks. You threw me a stick. The recipe turned out to be so canonical that even the meat here is not veal, beef or pork. Lamb. And that's where it makes sense. Super sweet, delicious, my dear. Here's if even if you don't eat it, you don't want it, you'll eat it completely. 10. What's 10? 20 even. What's there is not pathetic. Let's move on. Okay. Well, now we're gonna have tea and coffee. And it's not just any coffee. It's cedar coffee. It looks like the following. This is the powder, attention, dissolves at 250 milliliters. Includes pine nuts, crushed, substitute, cream, chicken, A, cinnamon. Cardamom, ginger, ground cloves, ground turmeric. And judging by their statement, this cocktail, and it really is a cocktail, see, it's even split into fractions, is supposed to resemble coffee. Anyway, here's what's inedible on the bottom, should be great on top. Let's go.
all that stuff clotting. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Imagine eating pine tar with milk on top. You've got it all naturally clumped up in there. Gives off a subtle cinnamon aftertaste. It's very unusual. All it takes is one little sip to make your brain go crazy. Look, well, you can give it a 10 for unusual. That's great. Next up are the patisseries. There are only three of them here, so we don't stop for long. So first duck meat parte with tiger hogs in cream. It looks like the following. A very light, delicate pate. Oh, it was made in the 20th year. Let's go just a little bit. If it said chicken, I'd believe it was chicken. Soft, tender, nothing extra, and most importantly, not oversalted. You can eat normal pascalettes. The only thing is, it's a little bit crumbly or something, because the chicken one is like plasticine. It's even sticky at times. And here, I would not say that the sand is straight, but very, very such a fine fraction. At the same time, it is easy to tear. I give it a six, because I didn't see anything interesting in it. The next part A is already familiar because it's made from chicken liver. But there's one thing, it's got chanterelles in it. That's important. We didn't dump him, we chased him. And what's the fun of it? I can't figure out. So what? It's the same thing. That's it right there. It's me, gentlemen. What liver, what chicken, what chanterelles, what are you talking about? It's the same in flavor as the previous one. The duck was written there. Yeah, you might as well write that it's a peacock. Along with these tails here. Man, that's fucked up. Composition. Meat chicken broiler beef. And chicken liver. Well, how's that? Tribesman. Next came the actual rarity, because it's spiced elk patty with spices and garlic. 240 grams. Looks much darker already. Has a nice ice cream texture. Let's go. I don't even know how to describe it. Pork to taste. Well, basically, you fit that description too. One. You can feel the pleasant salt. It's like it's oversalted, but it's not. That's the line. Nice sourness. Next thing you know, you're smelling garlic. It's there. It's working out well. It tastes a bit like meat-based baby food. Except there's practically no salt in there at all. There's a very powerful flavor here. Class. You can't get enough of it. And the best part, unlike other partes, this one doesn't require any bread. I don't want to interrupt it with anything. Here he is, class. That's why I give it a 10. And now came the beauty of this such cedar tea, which includes Ivan tea from pine needles, cedar, Siberian, and Kuril tea. There is also the inscription, not only a delicious tea, but also useful to those who think about the prevention of colds. It's green in color, let's go. No sugar was added so as not to overpower anything. What delicious water. It feels like drinking tea just made of hay. Yes, it looks patriotic, beautiful, etc. But it tastes like an amateur. Either you have to brew this whole thing here to get that kaffir tinge. Then maybe there'll be some tea flavor. Here's hay with hay. It even smells like hay. Well, I don't feel anything. All of them. But there is salvation called jam from cedar cones. Now that's really an exhibit. What, eating cones, huh? Yeah, they're chewy, by the way. Well, easy. Second bump is coming. Fuito. I should have just combined it. And then you'll know Zen. It felt like I was somewhere in the taiga, in the Siberian forest. She's all gooey, Serena. 
a whole forest in my mouth. A high, naturally a ten. Thank you very much. Listen, after a delicacy like this, it's just standard run-of-the-mill candy. Well, I won't dwell on them for long. There's, yeah, there's a few of them. They're pretty much all the same. There are dark chocolate. I had a bite. Yeah, that's nothing at all. It's just a sweet, 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 chocolatey, chocolatey candy. These big candies have marmalade inside, and this one has Cassinac. All of them. What's there to talk about? Naturally, a ten. I'll eat it all. But then, here, friends, we have laid out such a battery of cans, and each one is of special interest because there was nothing like it on the channel except the usual stew. You and I are practically in the animal world right now. Only they're dead. So I'll remind you what's coming up today. Buffalo meat, venison, roe deer, elk, well, regular beef stewed for comparison to others, and beaver meat. Let's go. As a matter of fact, now we'll be revealing the winner in terms of flavor data among meat foods. So, venison versus beef stew standard. About the beef, well, that makes sense. Our domestic standard, lots of fat, lots of meat, there is fiber, you can see it all, nice color. Nothing needs to be heated because the meat won't be very presentable. Can be eaten cold, it's great. Venison is a little more complicated. First of all, there is almost a complete absence of fat. It's not here. Secondly, the extremely strange texture of the meat itself. There's already a minimum of fibers here. It's like, you know, somebody beat him and he didn't die. Shit. We'll find out who got you, dear. Maybe it's just that he didn't fit in the jar. You know, he was pushed in there. In and out. Let's start with the stew. It's gonna be like a tuning fork. Let's go. The Belarusians have a competitor. I'm in all seriousness, because it's almost impossible to find this much meat in our cans. And the meat is of high quality, without veins, without excess liquid, with a pleasant structure, spices, and not oversalted baby right away. Right now, just for contrast. Let's go. First time. First off, much harsher, much less salty. Flavor is generally duller. In principle, if you want, you can cook the cow exactly the same way, because here you have cranberries, juniper, and salt in the composition. You know, yeah, what does it feel like? I'm gonna eat my cheek. It's really good. Basically, in terms of quality, they are on par. If you like fat here, if you don't like fat, you need straight meat. It's here. That's why we can safely give the venison a nine. Next round. Cocksucker. Row, huh? Against moose. We're standing on top of each other, looking at each other like the Wild West. All right, buddy, I'm out of here. The rations have been filmed. Both dishes are worthy of our attention. Let's start with the mousse. Don't look at me like that. And it's cooked in an unusual way too. Here it has walnut, pine sesame and salt in the mix. I mean, there's these darker flecks. It's not some kind of disease, it's a sesame seed. Cheers. Very stiff, very stiff. It's even unpleasantly stiff. These are the fibers. They break down on your tongue, but that doesn't make them any softer. I honestly still don't really believe it's moose. Do you have any idea how many elk you have to breed? Wild elk? Yeah, these animals right here to put these canning jars on the stream? I can't say anything. I can't prove anything, but these are my purely logical guesses. A little bitter. Basically, it's not much different from a cow. The only thing is tough meat, that's it. Well, it's because a wild animal, it's so powerful in itself. It doesn't rest in the meadow. It walks all the time in the woods like I do. How they gain their mass from just branches and tree bark. I don't understand. I'm not eating it. Yeah, I'll give you a nine on the small ones. It's actually delicious. Moving on. The next one is a roe deer. Note the amount of fat. I'm really shocked. It would seem such a small, compact animal. How come there's so much fat in it? Here too, the meat is very fibrous, but really not as red as the previous one. Notice it's so much more faded. Let's go try it.
He's a bunny. It's so pathetic to even eat it. Ingredients include mushrooms, walnuts, pine nuts, oil, butter, fresh onions, salt, ground black pepper. Even though this is again reminiscent of our stew, it's more boring in flavor, so lean. Anyway, it feels wild. It doesn't feel like it's been fed on these here prokopki that feed our cows. We're used to it. And there the meat has a slightly different texture already. They caught this poor thing and put it in here. Why? So I can sit here and videotape, huh? Poor roe deer. All right then. It's amazing. But there's even some fishy undertones. You bet, two years overdue. I can't give you much in the way of points. I'd give it a six. So, the finish line. Buffalo meat versus beaver meat. Good morning, everyone. Let's start with the more. The usual meat, because buffalo is the same as cow. Especially since it says halal, and halal means quality, all that stuff. The composition is extremely simple. Buffalo meat, onion, salt, bay leaf. In other words, it is a stew. Yeah. And it looks the part. Note, the only thing is that the meat is very fibrous. Extremely. You just break it down. Just fibre. Nothing extra. No veins, not even fat. There's some broth in here and that's good. Let's go. It's our stew. Just a cow. There's no difference at all. A little tougher than the average cow. That's it. It's Poevo, pardon me. A solid animal. There's nothing to talk about. A dozen at once. But here's something to talk about, because I've never seen it, never tried it. I didn't even know they actually ate it. Well, the beaver and the beaver shong crawl, they're their structures, builds, bridges rivers, reproduces. Somehow his tail is still long. What else do I know about him? Nothing else. This kind of crap exists in nature. Yeah, what? Are you supposed to eat it? So the composition is beaver meat, mushrooms, onions, salt, milk, powder, oil, butter, butter, pepper mixture. What's that? How can there be... How can you imagine mushrooms with milk and beaver meat all together? And none of it. I don't see any mushrooms around here. I just see meat. Another important point. If you look here, the can was made in 2020. The shelf life of a canning jar, as you know, is traditionally two years. So that's two years in arrears. Ask me why that is. Yeah, because Artemka sent me this package back in 21. It's strong. Smells like wild meat. The kind with, you know, minimal spices. It's like, let's go. One, tough. Naturally, any wild animal is tough. Second, it smacks of Tina's some kind of river water, like it was just pulled out of there, not even washed. That's the impression. And fish. It's amazing. It's like I got the carp. I'm licking it like this. It's disgusting. He's disgusted. Ooh, 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 ooh. And it's getting bitter. 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 Some kind of chemosis like aftertaste. No, it's dangerous, guys. So on a score of two, no beavers to touch. Good morning, everyone. It's so gross. I don't even know how to swallow anything now. She's so nasty, Serioga. Really? Anyway, in today's animal world, and in such a tough fight, our domestic simple Sukutushenka wins unconditionally. Well, there's nothing tastier. It's familiar. We love it, we know it, and it's easy to eat, and there's plenty of fat and normal salt and bay leaves. The recipes are all worked out already. Why trap beavers? You can imagine, you have to make a farm to put on the stream, breeding beavers. I think it's easier to raise cows, it's more profitable, more fun. And I personally don't understand such delicacies. Here, write in the comments, would you eat this often? I didn't, I didn't like it. And it's not even about procrastination. I'm more than sure it tastes exactly the same and is not expired. Che Che, well, that's a big one. Well, now for the traditional verdict. First off, thanks to Artyom for such a rare, cool, delicious fit. I fed him. You, friends. Thank you for watching this video to the end. It came out surprisingly long. I hope you enjoyed it. There's no point in discussing the food anymore. You've seen it all for yourself on the review. But it's about time we talked about Siberia. So, land development began in 1581. 
Ataman Yermak Timofeevich, with his detachment not without battles, came to the territory where Siberian Tatars lived. I didn't master it right away. The indigenous peoples of Siberia somehow did not particularly want to be part of the strongest state. But in general, Siberia is now ours, Yakutia and the Far East. Therefore, today's delicacies are nothing but a reference to the cuisine of the indigenous peoples of Siberia. Area of the Siberian Federal District, 4,360,000 square kilometers. That's more than the entire EU combined. Let me remind you that there are 27 countries in the EU at the moment, but only 16.5 million people live in Siberia, the richest region of the country. Coal, metals, uranium, oil and gas are mined here. In general, there is everything for the country's economy to be strong and stable. There you go. Guys, that's it for now. Don't forget the likes, it's very important. Also subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next video. And check out the live feed. There are regular streamings held there. Good luck everybody, bye.